Joining me today is Melissa Counts, ARIA Award winner, model, and TV appearances in Richmond Hill, Home and Away, Paradise Beach, Echo Point, Pacific Drive, All Saints, Medivac, Swift and Shift Couriers, The Real Housewives of Sydney, Housos, and now giving it a crack in the hit seven series, SAS Australia. Melissa, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. How are you? Very good. Now, you may have noticed I deliberately left off one particular show you're in because I noticed in a number of interviews you've had, it's almost like, where have you been? But you have had steady work since East Street, haven't you? Yes, I have. I've been fortunate enough to work in the industry for some time. Um, you know, I've had time off here or there, but it's just it's it's just so baffling when you have a body of work and you know the 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 second show that you ever did thirty years ago keeps getting mentioned. It's just crazy to me. But I don't know. I guess that's. What I, I don't know. I know East Street was very popular. I understand that, um, but it's just like, oh, so what have you been doing since East Street? And it's like, what the last thirty years? <laughs> um, having a life, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's funny. Um, yeah, but all good, all good. Just a, a quick fanboy question, though. I was a big fan of the cult late night series Pacific Drive, where you played mm. Bethany Daniels. Now she. Yeah. Was HIV positive, if I remember. Was that not a first for Aussie television? It seemed to be way ahead it of its was, time. It was a first. Um, I, there was a lot of responsibility on my shoulder for that role. Um, a lot of HIV and AIDS patients actually reached out to me when they knew when that role was on TV. Um, and I did a lot of research with HIV AIDS patients actually while I was filming that and I was involved with a lot of charities and things like that, um, which was, uh, in my opinion, like some of, some of my favourite work that I've ever done um, because it wasn't just playing this made-up character. We were trying to portray that you can have HIV you can be sexual you still you can have partners um you know back back in that day it's changed now but back in that day it was like oh you've got HIV you know we can't go near you and we can't shake hands and we can't it was still that whole thing that was going on which was just crazy to me um so it was so great, you know, okay, yeah, this young, you know, blonde girl has HIV and um, she's heterosexual and she's had multiple partners and she still mm. has multiple partners and she's living her life. And I think it, it was important for us to get that message across. Well, I tell you what, I could do a whole interview just on Pacific Drive, but we will. I know. <laughs> but we but will move on. Back, yeah, I know, I know. It's, it was such a great show. It was such a great show. It really was. And you know what? We just don't have it like, anymore. Where's all the late night, like, you know, trashy dramas that we want to sit and watch when we get home and, you know, have a bottle of champagne to and they're gone. Yeah, gone are the days of Pacific Drive and chances as well. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Um, I want to go back a bit because I think where you came from sort of sets the whole SAS thing. Um, obviously, you played the, the famous role of Nikki Spencer in East Street. And from what I remember, mm -hmm. she was a real street smart, confident, tough, self-assured kind of girl. Yeah. Was that Everything the... that I wasn't. <laughs> well, that's the question. Was, was, yeah. was that the complete opposite to how you were feeling at the time? Yes. Yes, yes, it was. Um, it's so funny. It's like, look, we all have strengths and weaknesses. Um, you know, I do have huge insecurity problems. I always have. Uh, I know I'm street smart, yes. Uh, and, over, and over the years of being in the industry, you've had to become that way. Um, I am very strong in, 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 in a lot of aspects um, in my life. But... I do get to these things where, you know, I, and, and I'm sure everyone has it, but they deal with it differently. Yeah. Uh, mine can weigh me down sometimes. You know, you're not good enough. You're not this enough. You're not that enough. Um, so playing that role for me when I was younger was very daunting because I was the quiet girl at school. I wasn't the, you know, the showy one and the popular one and the loud one. And 
I was quite quiet at school. So for me to play that role and to be all robust and, you know, I'm this and I'm that, it was it was a challenge, but that's what acting is and I thrived on it. Um, and that's why reality TV is so different to, you know, w- when you're playing a character, you can really, you know, that's why I love acting because you become somebody you're not mm. um, and you can be anything, you know, that the role requires you to be. When you do reality TV, it's you. And it's for an actress coming from a background of acting, it's like Mm. someone opens up the curtain and says, oh, there you are. And it is very, very, very daunting and very confronting. But, um, yeah, look, she, she, a a lot of people loved her because there wasn't a lot of characters like that on TV at the time. It was kind of like a breakthrough character, you know, the leather jacket and the tough tough girl and you know it's just what was hip and happening back then for young for young kids I guess um Mm. and she just was so popular I mean the amount of letters fan letters that I used to get on a week-to-week basis was crazy bags of it like crazy 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 stuff well I I saw that you like were exposed to drugs and and creepy blokes and all that horrible stuff that comes with the with the positives of of fame Mm. How did you get through it without actually getting involved too much in it? Um, As I said, I learnt to protect myself at a very young age. I had a very disciplined childhood. I wasn't allowed to do a lot. Um, For some reason, I've always been a massive protector of myself. Um, I've never had a one-night stand, ever. I'm just... I'm just not, um, you know, I don't know whether it's the lack of confidence, but I I wasn't somebody who put myself out of there. So as soon as I found a situation where I wasn't going to, and I am a bit of a control freak too, (laughs) as soon as I found myself in a situation that I didn't felt funny or, you know, I just was like, nah, tapping out, you know, and that whole being lured into a room, I don't know why. I think because I was in the industry for such a long time since I was a little girl acting commercial, sorry, being commercial modeling, I just knew the signs. Mm. Okay, if this doesn't feel right, then it's not right, you know, and I just I just knew to stay away from it and I, knew, I, I never really got myself into situations where I was ever taken advantage of, thank God, I know so many are. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so it was just, I don't know. I don't know how I knew to be honest, because, you know, it's not that I'm like a super intelligent being. I just, something didn't feel right to me. I couldn't control the situation. That was it. I tapped out. Well, this is purely speculation on my part. I'm I'm reading between the lines, so let me know if I'm wrong. But I I speculate that one of the things that kept you steadfast was was your father. One of your favourite songs, one of my favourite songs um, of yours is uh, Goodbye Daddy. It's a beautiful song, but it's also tough to hear for any yeah. of us that have lost someone significant. What do you remember yeah. about your dad and his lessons that sort of carried you through? Uh, yes, my dad was a very, very strict man. He was mm. a very strict man. He was brought up in a very strict way. Um, he was Austrian. His mother was a very hard woman, very tough, very strict. I mean, I saw her belt beat up on my grandfather at one point like she was very very tough and that's all my father knew and I think when he had children something softened in him for sure but he still had this very tough exterior about him and he didn't let his guard down very much so you know it was that constant trying of to get his approval and to make him happy and to be a good girl and to do the right things because I wanted his approval constantly. I craved his love and attention and affection, Um, you know. So and then when he got sick, um, you know, and you see the person that you love and admire so much get so sick and die within six months, um, it's just horrific. I mean, I think I was 25 at the time. And it 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 really it really took its toll on me. It really really did. I I needed to seek therapy. What when he got sick, I had to continue seeking therapy afterwards. I just I just didn't cope with his death at all. Um, 
and um, and I think that did reshape me in a lot of ways. Um, that whole protection thing, you know, I don't know. It was just um, it was very traumatic for me. So that's where that song came from, and I wrote it for that. It was very hard to write. It was actually hard to hand it over to the producer and say, right, I've written this because it's it's your it's so deep and dark and it's it's what's coming from your heart and your soul. It's hard to share those things, you know. It's hard to hand that over. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Um. So thank you, thank you for bringing up that song because um, you know, not many people do, and I, unless you know my real hardcore fans, I say, oh, that song. They go, oh yeah. yeah. But so thank you. I appreciate you bringing that up because it was something that I wrote at the time and it was, um, yeah, it was a hard song to write and um, but it's got so much meaning behind it. Yeah, I, I actually had a, um, a a sister. In fact, her name was Melissa and she passed away and uh, I've, I've actually listened to that song before and, you know, when, when you're listening to it from a different perspective than just it's a song, you know, it, the, the tears come flooding out. It's, it's, oh. actually, it's actually a, a, a beautiful song. But... Um, the, the the I guess the baton has been passed now, and you're the, you're the uh, a mother now. And by the way, yeah. you have the cutest kids. That that I think it's your son with that big lot of hair that he's got. He's... He's Afro. He's so cute. Oh my god, my little golf champion. <laughs> he's he's, a, he's fifth state champion. My son in golf, oh, and he's wow. eight. Yeah. So, um, my little golf champion, and then my little um my little genius, my girl. They're they're good kids. They're good kids. I just oh. I just love being a mum so much. I just, they, they, as soon as you have children, it's like they're wrapped up in your heart. They really are. It's crazy. So, um, yeah, but they're, yeah, they're good kids. They're good kids. Well, well, so was being part of SAS about them at all? Because I can imagine um, how proud they would have been of you. And, you know, if you can do that, they can strive to do absolutely anything. Bless them. Um, I hope so. Look, at the time, you know, I'm not going to lie, we were in lockdown and I was heading to a dark place. Like I was just feeling really locked in like we all were. Um, you know, they'd asked me to do SAS, the the second series, and I said no um, straight away because, look, at the end of the day, it's not my cup of tea. It's not. They've asked me to do the jungle before, but I don't want to eat bugs. Um, you know, I've been asked to do that many times before and I'm envious of the people who go on that show and do it because it is, it's tough in the sense that, I, like, I can't eat those, the, a, lot, a lot of the reason why it keeps a lot of celebrities away from doing that show is because of the eating of the food and stuff. Mm. So then I thought it would be a good idea to do SAS, not. Um, it was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Um I'm glad that I did. I can't even talk about it without getting emotional. It was so full on for me um, because I don't think I've ever completely let my guard down or let myself be so vulnerable, especially with the camera in my face, ever in my life. Wow. And it was, I can't even remember that however long I was in there, the 48 hours I was there, they cut a lot of that first day out, which is devastating to me. We did so much more than what you're going to see on TV. Um, it was gruelling. It was exhausting. I mean, I had big, tall Olympians come up to me and say, Mel, you got through that. Like, that was amazing. I'm exhausted. So I pushed myself so hard. And it's just, it, it, it's so, when I came out, I was so proud of myself and I was so happy. And I think for me, it wasn't about getting through the series. It wasn't about getting through a week. It was about getting off the boat mm. for me. It was about lasting longer than five minutes and not saying I'm out, you know, giving it a go, giving some things a go. And I did that and I proved that to myself. But I hope that that comes through and because people who haven't seen the show before who are just going to tune in to see me, um, uh, you know, I don't want them to say, oh, well, she didn't last very long. You know what I mean? But you just, people just have no idea how grueling and how full on it is, especially I've never tried for a, tried for a triathlon or an Iron Woman or a, I've never done anything like this ever in my entire life. Um you know, I've never even been in the city to surf. You know, I've never done mm. anything like that. 
So this was so huge for someone like me, so huge. And I want to be proud of myself, but I'm, I'm, I, I don't want to, I don't, I, I don't want to leave one down either. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, no, no, of course. But I mean, clearly you've you've proved any detractors wrong with you know you've got a beautiful family, a long and successful uh, career. It takes courage, yeah. it takes confidence, self assurance, yeah. chutzpah, yeah. determination, conviction. But All judging, that. but judging by the SAS promos, you do seem to jump to that that panic and fear and self doubt and. So you've got all of those things like the courage and the confidence, yeah. all those things that that say. So, I mean, I know we touched on this earlier, but why do you think you, you, you jumped to that? I think it's my defence mechanism so people know that I'm a real person and I'm not somebody that they've made up their mind about who I am. You mm. know, when I was, you know, doing, you know, all the work, and everything, people have this, it's the, it's the whole tall puppy syndrome. People yeah. have this perception of you because you're on TV, you think you're all of that, you think you're the best, you think that. So by me being vulnerable and, and, and telling everybody my fears straight away makes me normal and I think it's a defence mechanism that I've used and learnt to use over the years, if I'm being honest. Um, and I've never said that to anyone ever, but I honestly believe that is why I just want to, dump everything on everyone's shoulders straight away. Hey, listen, I'm not that person. I'm this person. Like, you know what I mean? It's okay to be vulnerable. You know, I know you see people's Instagram and everything, living this wonderful life. and so It's good to see some bad shit as well, you know. Mm. Um, we're just all human beings. We're just all trying to be successful. We're all trying to make it. I am a very normal person. I've grown up in the industry, yes, um, you know, but at the end of the day I still have fears. I still have insecurities. And, Yes, of course I still have. You do have a level of confidence. You can't go and do and have a career of what I've had and not have confidence. You can't get on stage and sing, you know, in G-strings and a, and a leotard and whatever else, a leotard. Oh, that's so 80s. Oh, I love that. Sorry. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Without a level of confidence. So it's not that I don't have any confidence at all. It's just like I've learned just to constantly beat up on myself. And, I, you know, it's, I think it's a defence mechanism that I've, that I've adapted over the years. Well, let me ask you, I mean, obviously going by the panicking and the promos and then now you've participated in the show, do you firmly believe and know now that you are much stronger than you give yourself credit for? Yes, I do. And after I got through that first day, even getting up, getting on that plane, oh, my God, I can't, I can't, I'm the biggest scaredy cat. You have no idea. I am the biggest scaredy cat. Getting in that plane was hard enough. Then being turned upside down, terrifying. Then to be submerged in water, like, are you kidding? I I just cannot, I still can't, I watch it now and say, oh, no, I can't do that. I'm watching it saying I can't do that. So the fact that I did it, like, freaks me out still to this day. <laughs> and it's so sad because all these other people, you know, go on days and days and days of this and I did my one shitty day and then the next day I did 48 hours and I just felt so heroic but then I guess everybody's different you know everybody's got different levels of fitness and you know all sorts of things so I've got to stop beating myself up about the fact that I didn't last very long because the fact that I got off the boat and got onto the actual sand was huge for me yeah absolutely Look, I want to shift gear a little bit and, and get your thoughts on the yeah. Australian drama scene. Now, we actually yeah. spoke about this a bit before, so gone are the days of the, you know, East Street Pacific Drive. I mean, Neighbours is on the brink now and, and will be cancelled unless they find another financial backer. Home and Away seems to be the only continuing drama yeah. that is year in, year out. Do you reckon it's the demise of the industry or is content just being made differently these days? Content has been made differently these days. It's a lot cheaper to do a reality TV show than mm. a TV series. We've never had a brilliant uh, industry in Australia anyway, and now that reality TV is so much cheaper to make, it demises our whole industry even further. Mm. We have the talent. We have the writers. We have the directors. Um, we just we have the amazing crew in Australia. Incredible. We just don't have the money. We don't have the funding like America has or, yeah. you know, anyone else has around the world. We, there's not enough 
money put towards churning out Australian content other than reality TV. And it's so sad because you see these, that's why a lot of um, actors, you know, coming out of these incredible acting schools in Australia are going overseas because that's where the work is. And there was hope that Netflix was going to be doing more Australian content and I hope that is the case. Um, yeah. But it's just becoming harder and harder and harder to be a thespian <laughs> <laughs> in this country. It is. It's really hard. And this is why people are doing reality TV. And, you know, I don't have anything against reality TV at all. I love watching it. I'm a huge fan of reality TV, all of it, love it all. Yeah. But coming from an acting background, it is very hard to transition into that, as we were saying before, it's very hard to all of a sudden, okay, well, they don't want you to play a character anymore. They just want you to be you. And it's like, hold on, what? You know, most actors that you speak to, they're, they're quite introverted and I am that person. I'm quite an introverted person, um, yeah. you know. So it is, it is hard for me. I think what gets me through is, you know, my singing background and being on stage and stuff like that. But even though you've got to put on a persona, you know, but I think with reality TV, it, it's just you. It's just you there. And that, that's hard because you can't blame anyone else if you stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> you can't say, well, they wrote a terrible character for me. You know, it's <laughs> like, no, it's you. Well, I mean, the other thing that's been going on lately, obviously, is, is COVID. I mean, it really played with the livelihood of so many actors and musicians. Yeah. And, I mean, obviously yourself as well. Have you spoken yeah. to, to any actors and musicians that have been doing it really tough recently? Yes. I've got um, friends who all they do is perform. And that first year of COVID, I think she had like over 200 shows booked and cancelled. So oh, her whole cool. year was wiped out. Mm. I mean, and this is a, a this amazing singer. She works in all the clubs in Melbourne, um, she's got an amazing career over there and just it was just all taken away from her. I mean, that is hard. Um, even for me, you know, the gigs that I would do throughout throughout the year, um, I, have, I haven't done a gig for over two years now, you know, yeah. not ongoing, like or being able to, um, you know, when COVID was happening, there was... You couldn't record and, and, you know, release and it's just, it was it was tough. I'm starting to do that now, which is exciting yeah. and I'm hoping there's going to be a market for that whole, you know, guest appearance in a nightclub and stuff and it's coming back slowly but surely, but it is a slow steep. Just a uh, slight change of pace and I'm going to do only one question about E Street um, mm -hmm. that I guess people don't ask or if they remember. Can you remember how it all ended? I mean, wasn't Nikki lost in the outback or something? Or did she actually um, end up with Max? How, how did the show end? I have absolutely no idea at all. No idea. <laughs> uh, I don't even know how I got it. Didn't I go back and live with my parents again or something? I just remember a scene where towards the end of the, the whole show, there was a whole bunch of people lost in the outback and then oh. I think they flash forward to everyone being in hospital or something. But, I mean, I could be on the wrong <laughs> the wrong. Tangent. I can't remember. It's too bloody long ago. I honestly can't remember. I know that I left the show because I had too many gigs and I had to go and I, there wasn't enough time in the day. And I know they asked me back. Yeah. And I did a stint and then I left again. So, no, I can't remember. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Too long ago, love. So, um, with the whole E Street experience, um, I mean, obviously you're young and impressionable, was it more lows than highs or more highs than lows? Oh, definitely more highs than lows. Okay. Oh, it was incredible, incredible. Mm. Just being on set and, you know, being on set, I, I love anyway, um, that's my favourite thing to do, like learning lines, reading script, becoming a character, all of that's fabulous. Um, it was just such a hip and happening show. Like everyone was so cool and hot and it was just amazing. It was an incredible time, like a, a, a incredible to be a part of it. Um, mm. And I, you know, as tough as it was, as tough as it got, and I'm just meaning the workload, um, it's still, oh, it. It was an incredible time in my life. Incredible. 
So uh, I guess what's coming up for you next, Melissa? Anything in the in the acting or music scene that you yeah, can share or hobbies um, or interests? Or? I'm, I, well, I'm going to go back into the studio. I'm trying to, I'm, it's trying to stimulate my songwriting skills um, and I've been co-writing with Nick Jay, who I've worked with before. He's an incredible producer and um, so I'm going to hopefully do this single with him and, and co-write on the second single. Um, so I want to have those two ready to go. I really want to get out and gig again. I just want to see people again and fans and, you know, people are excited about music and um, so I really want to reconnect with, you know, my beautiful loyal fans who stick by me through thick and thin. Um, and uh, Chris Sun, I hope, who I absolutely love working with, I did The Possessed with him, which was released this year, and um, I'm hoping he's doing another film and I'm hoping... If I say pretty please, he'll he'll put me in his film because I just I love doing film. It's so much fun, and he's doing amazing work at the moment. So yeah, hopefully that will happen this year as well. Awesome. Well, Melissa, we'll leave it there. Thank you for your time, and we'll be watching you on SAS and hopefully on a maybe a reality show that you really want to do. Maybe you're a dancer. Maybe we can get you on Dancing with the Stars. Ooh, I'd like to do Dancing with the Stars. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'd love to do that. Awesome. Well, thank thank you very much. Um, Thanks, uh, that that was Melissa Cowles, actor and musician with a long and established career on our screens, and now giving it a crack on SAS.